In this episode of Another Zelda Podcast, David and Dan head into the wild to see if they can live the way Link lives. Hello and welcome to this episode of Another Zelda Podcast. I am David, your host, and today co-hosting along with me is Mr. Dan McCoy. Dan, how are you? Hello, everyone. Glad to be back. Yeah, welcome back to the show. You're kind of like, you're really kind of, you're almost a re- series regular this season. I know. Season. I kind of just follow you around and just like <laughs> jump in and be like, can I be on this episode? Yeah. <gasps> oh, it's great. It's great. Um, this is the th- So this is a short season. We're only doing 12 episodes this season so that we can kind of get back on our normal yeah. annual schedule. Catch the swing of things. But you've been in three of them. Yeah. Trucking you, along. You... I don't know if you're playing Skyward Sword yet. Are you at all? You told me to wait till December because you said we may do you a play along. (laughs) So like I literally have to pass it in the store and I'm like, David said no. Okay, (laughs) so walk past in this moment, I'm realizing there might have been a miscommunication situation there. (laughs) He almost spit his water at you right now. He almost spit his water dropped and I like had it in my hands and I was like, today's the day you should buy it. Well, here's the thing. Okay, so um. Kate and I, if we can, okay. we may not be able to pull it off by December because it's actually now we are now recording this episode in October. Yeah, October. And um, um, everyone's probably hearing it in November. Um, we, we So uh, Kate and I would like to do, we haven't done a, re- an, 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 a game review episode almost in two seasons because oh, wow. I really like to do them with Kate. Sure. Remember back in season one, two, we'd be like, here's our Ocarina episode. Here's Got it, our, man. our Wind Waker episode. Well, for all of season three and so far through season four, we haven't done that. And it's been a specific choice with me. Mm-hmm. As grateful as I am for everybody else co-hosting and being a part of the show now, like I kind of emotionally still need Kate to be a part of those without a doubt. Like, review episodes. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. It's fine. Um, however, we were thinking for the fun of it, we might invite other people to be in on that Skyward Sword conversation too as like okay. our season finale this year. Yeah, I have a text message from you that says, don't buy this until December. Are you sure? I'm a hundo cent, like without a doubt. I believe you. Because you were like, oh, we'll do we'll do a let's play kind of thing. And like, just just hold off. You're like, well, you even said like, you can buy it now if you really want to. But like, you know, wow. ah, yeah, I've been walking by it. I'm so sorry. Because what I was, I guess, trying to communicate was um, in December, yeah. we will be recording this review episode. Got it. So okay. so get on it. Yeah, Start playing. Like, yeah, you jerk. I myself am only like three dungeons in it. No, I think I'm in, I'm going into my fourth dungeon. I've already gotten into the weird cloud bubble and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I've read a lot about it yeah. because like, it's the one I've always said I wanted to play because right. it's canonically numero uno. I even talked to Kate about this. I said, you know, Dan, Dan is to this day, you're still someone who's played a few Zelda games. Like two. Yeah. Yep. Right. Maybe I understand three. that. And so, um, so, so you, in our group, our cast of characters, you kind of re- represent someone who's new to Zelda, but into it. The everyday man. I guess so. Okay. I'll um, take it. Um, and, and, and you've expressed to me many times, I kind of feel it might be fun to start canonically at the start. Yeah. And I kind of feel like the next Zelda game I dig into seriously, because you basically played Ocarina as like a, a normal person. Sure. Maybe yep. not a mega Zelda fan. Mm-mm. And I think you kind of basically played Breath of the Wild as a normal person. Yeah. And now like, since we become friends and you kind of learn a little bit more about this stuff, it's like, oh, maybe there's a little bit more fandom happening. So, honestly, I had the full intention of passing up Breath of the Wild. Like Zelda's oh, really? not, yeah. But then we, our friendship started blossoming, and you were like, "If you don't play Breath of the Wild, you're dead to me." And okay, I there like, might have been a communicate miscommunication there. No, I'm I said sure I the sometimes words, eat. Meat. I will slide tackle you in your sleep <laughs> if you don't start playing these games right. It was maybe, maybe not those exact words, but I feel like it was there. <laughs> I get it. Okay, so anyway, slide tackle you. In your so sleep. you have said to me while you sleep. That's really that's pretty intense. That comes out of nowhere. Yeah, you just. On the ground, and then you're, boom, still on oh the ground. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. We were talking about Skyward Sword, but I honestly think we don't have enough time to have it be the season finale. But I do think it'd be fun for you to join Kate and I on that episode. Sure. Love to do it. So, so, so p- pick up Skyward Sword as soon as you like. Got it. And even if we review it in the spring, so be it. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Because also, Kate has it now. Okay. But um, I also don't want to, like... So we have learned, when we do these review episodes, we it's really good for us to not feel rushed to play them. Yeah. Um. Every time we've done a review episode where it, we like took six months to play the game and you played at your leisure, like with intent, but at your leisure. Yeah. Like knowing there's a deadline, but it's not like, oh my God, it's next month. I have yeah. to do two hours every night. Um, the review episodes, in my opinion, go a lot better. We're a lot calmer, more and relaxed. Are, are you guys like completionists? Is there like hidden things to find? We're, and like, uh, like do we dungeons are like it, 100% We speak to these games as like... Because um, Zelda's like, mostly Do you plot. hit the... Do you hit the 
narrative end yeah. point is got what it. we do. Got it, got it, got it. You know what I mean? It's like if you're kind of going through, we're talking about the lore, we're talking about the story, we're talking about some of the mechanics. Yeah. But honestly, like the truth is our Wind Waker episode was difficult to have because there were so many side quests. Yeah. And we, I will admit, had a tighter deadline for that episode. We had to pull that one off in like three months. So Kate and I both pushed yeah. through Wind Waker. And I think it affected our um, our moods in that yeah, episode yeah. a little bit. We well, were kind of like, this game. It becomes more of a chore. Yes, a chore. Unless yes. a treat. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I got so you. I don't want to do that with Skyward Sword. And maybe we can even return to Wind Waker in a season two. But anyways, okay, I guess since we got all of, since we got our board meeting out of the way, let's yeah. get into this. Now episode. that I can officially buy the game, David has given me his permission. <laughs> don't buy it. Everyone see December. it. Okay. <laughs> let's do listener feedback and get in. Got it. Um, well, actually, no, I want to tell our audience what we're doing because this title might be a little vague. Um, if we sound a little different in this episode, we got, we're sitting on creaky stools. I don't know if people can hear that. Super creaky stools inside a teeny tiny little cabin um, out on, on, on the land that Gingsy and I have out in Kentucky. Yeah, it's great. Uh, we've got about 23 acres out here and we there's a waterfall there is a waterfall a lot of a lot of times that waterfall shows up in my ezp instagram every time we come out here just about every other weekend Mm -hmm. and i work out here sometimes and um i'm tremendously grateful that we found this land oh yeah um we 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 came across a really good deal Mm -hmm. so like we're really pleased that um it came into our ability to purchase it yeah and and at a realist in a realistic way yeah yeah and it's it's like my own everyone's got a third personal (laughs) it's like my own personal little hyrule out here sometimes it's so much fun that's adorable you can just well you did a little bit of it this weekend like you were just out there by the waterfall for a couple hours yeah you just you just take it in oh yeah got stung by a bee so oh yeah pros and cons (laughs) pros and cons still hurts I'm not going to lie. Well, I had my heart set that we were going to wor- record this episode literally outside. Yeah. We are right now. I've got the laptop and the, the camera going, and it's all going off a big battery that's behind you. Mm-hmm. It's basically like a fancy car battery that's made for camping because we don't even have electricity out here. And I really thought we were going to drag all this into the wilderness somewhere and record out there and have the birds chirping and the cicadas. Psych- 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 cicadas. Cicadas. <laughs> we got to wrap this up in nine hours, though. Nine hours left on the battery. Nine if hours. we keep recording at this rate, yeah, it'll nine die hours. nine hours. It's be uh, one of our shorter episodes. So. Yeah, I got to keep it moving. <laughs> but anyways, rain is in the forecast, and we can kind of see it on the horizon. So we chose to jam all this stuff into the cabin. So we might have a little bit of an echo. And honestly, halfway through this episode, it might start to it's, rain, and you will hear it oh, on yeah. the tin roof of this cabin. Oh, yeah. It's like hail. It's ping, ping, pong. Yeah, we're not even fully set up in here yet. We have like little plastic folding tables. We have plans for benches and fold down desks and all that kind of stuff. I don't even have the siding up on the inside yet. I think I'm going drywall on some of the walls and then like wood paneling to kind of keep it still rustic on some of the walls. Okay, I dig it. Yeah, not wood paneling like in the 70s. The stuff. No, that's I know. Stop. It should be like the wood paneling from the 70s. (laughs) I want this to be like a small madman's office. (laughs) Like you walk in. And oh. Just like a little brandy sifter over here. They're like, welcome to the cabin. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what it has to be. All right, let's do listener feedback and get into this. So today, though, actually, before, before we get into listener feedback, I do want to say, like, what we've decided to do here is we've been out here for three days now. There's, well, this is our third day here. Yep. Uh, maybe two full days, maybe 48 hours because sure. we came in in the evening two days ago. And we had some fun while we were doing this. We th- I thought, well, let's, since we knew, Dan, since we knew that you and I were coming out here to hang out this weekend, yep. I thought... Well, we, let's definitely record an episode because okay. we're together. Without a doubt. And I've never recorded out here on the land yet. And Ooh. eventually I'd like to record here all the time. Eventually, mm. maybe five years from now, I'd like to build a literal recording studio out there in the woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just by hand. We've. I really love building stuff. In a tree. Yeah, enough trees. Well, I am let's, let's do a tree kind house. of thinking that I'm going to put it up like 10 feet in the air. Beautiful. Like, you know, lo- the whole like trees, tree poles cemented into the ground. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's years away. But um, but what we've done is we've decided to make a list of things that happen in Breath of the Wild and maybe other Zelda games that are like wild based or survival based. Yeah. Things like making a fire, things mm-hmm. like cooking. And we're going to speak to each of them and then also speak to what our experiences were kind of trying them out. Yeah. Th- this weekend while we were here. Okay. Before that, listener feedback. Here we go. Listener feedback. Over here on the Video Game Summit episode, which is um, a couple episodes ago, Video Game Summit 2021, okay. a live Zelda quiz. It's the first time we ever did a live show ever, Dan. Ooh. It was terrifying. <laughs> and we got by by the skin of our teeth, I tell you that much. Um, pardon me. So Jack Faulkner here says, another podcast episode already? Question Boom. mark. Count me in. Guess I know what I'll be listening to for the next half an hour. Along with the top 100s list, the quizzes have become some of my favorite... Oh, top 10 lists. I misread it. Like Along with the top 100. 10 lists. Cool. So I guess the top 10 episodes. The quizzes have become some of my favorite episodes, and it's awesome to hear more 
of the AZP family having fun together. Yeah. Smiley face. Thanks, Jack. That's cool. I was part of that one quiz we did a while ago. You were. Was- I did terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you were the worst. <laughs> You're like, yeah, you definitely didn't but play. some of those, some of them, you kind of like logic through them. Yeah. There were some that were literally about games that you've never played. Yeah. And you logic through them. I remember listening and you were, there was something and then the audience feedback was like, actually, you did play as a different character in this. And I was like, I have no yeah. idea. I, I was lost. It's playing as coffee in Majora's Mask. We kind of we kind of biffed it with that question. Ah, happens to the best it's of us. It's a technicality that uh, that it's it's you, you do technically control another character in like it's it maybe it's debatable it? if you're like really taking on that character as a playable character, like with items, with the things. Yeah. But you do technically with your analog stick, walk that character around. But isn't, isn't it Link controlling that character? So well, technically that's you're a little... playing a character playing a character? So in Wind Waker, Link can do a thing where he can control, I guess, characters, you could say. And um, we have de- we decided that that was, you're still playing as Link yeah, controlling yeah. something. But no, no, no. The coffee thing, you you are your analog stick's moving it. I digress. Here we go. Another Video Game Summit uh, uh, comment. Video Game Summit 2021. Uh, thank you, David and Celeste, for hosting this wonderful event. We would love to see more of this in the future, for sure. Just one small info about the bonus question. Dun, dun, dun. While it's true that the Redeads start dancing while Link is wearing Garo's mask, in Majora's mask, by the way, sure, it is not the only mask that makes them dance. <gasps> you can also wear the Gibdo mask or captain's hat and have them dancing. Well, that's fun. We got to try it out. A Majora's mask review episode is in our future. Did they officially announce that Majora's Mask is going to be on the Nintendo 64 yes. online thing? Yeah, this Nintendo 64 online thing, which might be out as of, as of this episode posting. Okay. Um, Ocarina, or, original Ocarina and original Majora's Mask. So in other words, not ports of like the 3D remasters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is going to be on that service. Okay. I cannot wait to play Ocarina Classic. Um, not Ocarina 3D, I guess. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. there's a version where they could have taken the 3D one from 3DS and kind of ported, ported it to it the Switch, and it yeah. would look. The graphics are better in yeah. that game; they really are. And maybe that's still in the future. Okay, but um, I think it's cool that Ocarina and Majora's Mask will be on the Switch that you can play. You can take them on the go, so to yeah. speak. I really want to play Majora's Mask, especially since I loved Ocarina of Time, like the, the direct sequel. Like the fact that I was just like, yeah. no, this is for all these years. Apparently, you'll apparently the Nintendo sixty four thing is like it might be a couple extra dollars they're marketing it as an expansion pass so it may not just automatically drop in with your online thing you might okay. put five dollars down for the whole service which i mean but for the entire thing yeah, like right easy absolutely i think you'd enjoy that and uh, uh majora's mask wait 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 am i allowed to dan don't you dare play that game until i say it's okay yes sir yes sir boss oh my goodness uh here we go first our first impressions episode this is my first uh, first episode of the season First episode with Kate back. Oh my gosh! Um, it was it was a blast to see her. I've already spoken to that tons of times. Andy Sykes over here says, "I love." Oh, it's all caps here. I love you. I love you so much. You guys are great. Cool. Nice. And then, Thanks, now we man. go back to normal case. <laughs> <laughs> I love Zelda, but have never played it before. Wait, what? What? I love Zelda, but have never played it. But I might get Switch for Christmas again. All caps. You are great. Thank you so much for making these videos. Love you guys. And hi, Dave and Kate. It's a lot okay. of A's. It's a lot of that's a, that's the Kate is a long. That's, that's a, a lot big, of A's. Yeah, I dig it. So many letters for one syllable. Andy Sykes. That's great. I love it. That's fine. Thank you so much for loving us and loving the show and play more Zelda. And for you sure. get a switch for Christmas. They're amazing. I guess. Yeah, this lines up that hopefully it's this Christmas. He's got to let us know. Uh, let's see. Here's one more over at uh, on YouTube for the. What episode is this? The screenshot's a little weird. I can't tell. I guess we're just going to go blind into this one. This is from Hi, My Name is Neo. That sounds familiar. I think we've spoken to him a few times, or he's spoken to us a few times. Um, Thank you all involved with AZP. Found this pod when COVID first came to us, Mm. and it helped me through those uncertain times. Oh, yeah. Mm. Times are certainly still uncertain, so so little things like this help alleviate the day-to-day nonsense that we all encounter. Love it. Haven't watched yet honestly i just wanted to express oh i think this is a comment on an episode this is it might have this might have been the um first impressions episode season episode three of this season i spoke with my cousin i haven't watched the episode honestly yet i just wanted to express my gratitude toward david and everyone who's been ever been involved in any episode you all are great and then like a million emoticons of fire and fist pumps and explosions and fireworks and cool guy glasses well we think you're great yeah, thank you so much. Hi, my name is Neo. I wonder what his name is. 
<laughs> Let's do one more and then move on. Love it. Uh, top 10 Zelda fandom projects, Dan. This is hey, that's us. This is us. All right. Oh, whoa. Look at this. this is a long My one. gosh. That, that, this is hopefully a good one this, to end up. Hopefully this is nice. <laughs> I have. Yeah, I haven't. I don't know. Some of these come in not from me now. I, Celeste and a few others help me collect these comments too now. Okay, cool. Um, Ryan Betts. Mm-hmm. It looks like this happened over on YouTube. Sure. Um, it says, appreciate the shout out, guys. We have. I'm so sorry that I didn't remember you, Ryan Betts. That's cool. I appreciate the shout out, guys. Another really cool fandom project is the Zelda Universe's English dub of the 3D Legend of Zelda games. Oh, I've seen this. I've Ooh. seen this online. Zelda Universe is super cool. Okay. We even are starting to make a couple friends over there, which is really, really neat. Oh, my. Um, yeah. It's so funny because when Kate and I started this show, we would use Zelda Universe, Zelda Dungeon, and a few of these others kind of sometimes as, as like sources. Okay. When we had to like find a name of something because they're basically like these wikis. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Um, and we're big fans of Zelda Universe. Uh, so anyway, so they for the fun of it, they did like a fan dub, acting dub of Ocarina of Time. So they took the um, – they do it for like a lot so of – So they the hired like voice actors. Yeah, because- they literally hire voice actors that will play a role. And then all the stuff that normally has dialogue, they frame it such a way you don't really see the dialogue and it's performed. Oh, hey. Yeah, so it's kind of like voice acted video games. They do it for the fun of it. It's cool. They crowdsource voice actors, singers, musicians, and Zelda fans to give voices to all the characters from the games – and present the game's cutscenes gameplay as a watchable miniseries. Oh, I actually nice. got to be a part of last year's Zelda Universe dub of Majora's Mask as the Great Bay Ocean Giant. Super cool, Ryan. Uh, it was a small yet rewarding part, and I had a lot of fun using vocal transformation software to recreate the giant's surreal voice and sing Oath of Order. Uh, I don't, that's a, that's a, that's a song in the game, Dan. Sure. Yeah. I don't even consider this a self plug since my role was so small in the grand scheme of the work that everyone as a whole put into the project. It was a wonderful thing to have so many Zelda fans working toward a single post. Plus now the big studios don't have to make a Majora's Mask movie Mm -hmm. and they can focus on making Dave and TC's chic movie that we talked about in season two. But my favorite Zelda fandom project has still got to be The Legend of Neil. Fair enough. I actually spoke about The Legend of Neil back in season one to Kate. What is The Legend of Neil? Legend of Neil was a web series kind of before you could do YouTube shows. Okay. It was like you would like go to legendofneil.com and he'd have a little quick time file or whatever yeah. it was and you'd watch it. And they went for a couple seasons. Um, it was a character who, by means, by a mature content show, mature okay. content show, like swearing and stuff, unfortunately. Oh. So we womp, womp. we recommend, we think it was fun, but it, I also don't know how well it's aged in our current climate. Got it. Okay. Um, Little disclaimer there before yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the jokes now, we go back and you're like, that was funny uh, nine years ago, but a little less so yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. But, but, but it is, it is a funny take. It's about a guy who acts through through magical ways gets imported into the very first legend of zelda game mm-hmm. and and it assumes the role of link okay but he, he consi- always constantly says like no i'm neil i'm neil because you can it's a play on how you can put your own name in there mm, nice and um and he kind of goes to, every episode is almost going to the next dungeon and, and the comedy that ensues got it um do the, you do you ever put your own name in or do you keep it so before this podcast I always put my own name in. Really? Ever since starting this show back in the end of 2017, yeah. every time I play a Zelda game now, I got to put Link in. Yeah, it feels weird. If they yeah. call him like Dan, I'd be like, first of all, I know. I, I can't do this. Like, I don't. I think in the olden days, I, so when I play role playing games, I almost always put my own name in. And then, like, if they have you name other characters, I throw in like people that are my friends in my life or whatever, whatever mm-hmm. it feels like might be metaphorically appropriate for that person, you know? Yeah. You've probably shown up in a few, like, in Chrono Trigger or something. But um, but it's kind of because it's fun to like pretend that it's almost fun that you're like all like play acting those characters to some degree. Yeah, it gives it a little. It's a little fun. We uh, I played Mass Effect a while ago. Yes, and uh, so I had played it before, but I made myself named Shepard, who's uh the main. That's his last name. Okay, so it's Shepard. Yeah, so my character's name is Shepard Shepard because I wanted to be on first name basis with everyone. So, <laughs> so like, they would say instead of like calling it your last name, he's yes. like Shepard. I'm like, yeah, it's my first name. So <laughs> we're pretty close. You really hacked that one. Yeah, that's got cool. him. That's, that's using the big brain. You ruled it. You got it going. Got him. Um, you know what? I, f- I see one more Zelda fandom projects here. So I'm just going to read it and then we're going to move on. Hit it up. Beth B over here says, oh, Beth B actually just started her own podcast. Oh, I'll talk about it in a second. We've been uh, messaging back and forth, I think on messenger or email right now. I can't really, you know, I kind of, you have the software and it gives you all the inboxes and you're just insanely popular sometimes it's that's what i'm hearing difficult to track where they're coming in from um or or rather remember uh beth b says this is such a good episode no surprise there this is our top 10 fandom projects okay the background the background one 
was epic. That background one was the epic. backyard one. Remember that somebody had so. like the whole they decked out their entire backyard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it might be was, a typo there. That was crazy. You brought that to the episode. That was me. And was it just kind of a, a really healthy Google search is how you found it? I mean, I I don't know how quickly I found it, but I, I tried to find it. Like I, I, I spent probably a good two hours Yeah. because there was a couple that I was like, oh, this is good. But I feel like there can be something a little bit more. Cool. Little, and so like, you know, there's a bunch of Etsy, like people made their own skittles. And then Love finally it. somebody did their entire backyard, yeah. created it all from scratch made it glow neon and i was like oh this is it this this definitely has to have some representation it was indeed epic and uh that house that operates on the ocarina also epic yeah, oh that yeah was cool so great to be caught up because i'm up to date on everything but also sad because now i have to wait for the next episode mm-hmm. this is such an awesome podcast okay bye now well thank you beth yeah beth has reached out to me a little bit and she's um just started up a podcast called the gamer girl podcast oh nice with her and her friends I think they're making it on Anchor, and I think they're recording off their iPhone or something. I listened to the, the beginning of the, fir- the first episode, about sure. 20 minutes of the first episode, and I'll probably dig in a little bit more. Um, but but cheers to you, Beth. Go for it. Everybody should make podcasts. I think it's great. I, there was a little part of me that was like, oh, I kind of wish maybe we made it through 6.5 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More power to you, Beth. Go make that show. Get it, get it, get it. Super cool. All right, Dan. Yes. So quickly, before while I pull up the list of, of things that we're going to specifically talk about. Okay. Um, how I know you like to camp. I, yeah. You, you you showed me as we drove over here, we actually happened to pass like kind of the town your childhood home was in. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And you grew up, not in the wilderness, but with a fair amount of land. Oh, and yeah, so yeah, I think you like hung, yep. out, in the, hung that, out in the in wilderness. The woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what what was it? Um, how, how'd it go for you this weekend? Oh, it was great. Uh, you've done a lot of work on here. So whenever I think of camping, I, I like growing up, we didn't have like trails. Like, cause yeah. we didn't, like I didn't spend time making a path here and there. So, I'm much more of like just into the woods with a like a hatchet trying to like, you know, carve your own way that way. Um, when I when we first moved here, we we bought this land almost exactly a year ago. Yeah. And there weren't any trails. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's like one you one like road that the previous owner used for to get like a utility like a vehicle through. track like or a something. Like, yeah. yeah. When they just drive to the back of their land or something like that. But otherwise, every other trail I had to make. And I actually didn't have the trails here for the longest time because both King C and I kind of we just walked around the land. Oh, yeah. But as we started having more people here, we realized and especially during the summer when there are a lot of snakes and ticks, mm-hmm. it's like sometimes the paths are helpful. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, uh, I always a good uh, nature hike has to have a stream or a creek or a and like so the second we walk down there and you're like, and here's my waterfall. It's like, <laughs> Dave, this is glorious. Oh, it's, it's a beautiful. So serene. It's a beautiful little. There's a creek. Yeah. That, there's a spring fried creek. It, we basically kind of bought a valley. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and so great. it all comes down to this creek. And um, then there's three other creeks that when it rains, they kind of fill up and, and feed that waterfall. But the spring fed part feeds the waterfall all the time. So it's at least always kind of on a trickle. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I also love it. Thank you. It's, yeah. it's, it's not like epic, epic. It's maybe like six or seven feet tall, the actual I waterfall. Think you could call it. I mean, it's not like a Hawaiian waterfall, you know, yeah, not yeah. like going to be diving off the edge of it or anything. Yeah. 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 Um, In fact, if you jumped off the top of it, I think you might hit your butt on the bottom. Like, I think it would be treacherous. Yeah, it's yeah. Tall. I think it's, so when I'm standing we'll at the bottom. We'll just get a no bottom, diving sign. And we got to put up right a no diving there. sign. Just, just when I'm sure standing at know. the foot of the waterfall, maybe a few inches in the water, like, yeah. you know, doing maintenance or whatever I'm doing, I think the top is higher than my head. Yeah. So it must be about seven feet. But anyway. And I, I got in. I got in that little light, nice little lake. Dan, you, Very cold. you went deeper into that swimming hole oh, that was so than cold. I ever have. Yeah. It's one of those things you walk in and like, it's not bad. Because you're instantly numb. You know what I mean? Like, it's just willing your feet to keep going forward, and then you instantly lose feeling. So it's okay. I grew up in a town next to Lake Michigan. And mm-hmm. Lake, and once in a while, you'd get the gust to go swim in Lake Michigan, and it was just ice water, oh, completely yeah. ice water. This reminds me a lot of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but th- sometimes what we do is we have, like, a little inflatable, um, like, dinghy. Okay. And we'll, like, hop out on the dinghy and just bounce around. Over in here? That, yeah, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's packed up right now. Um, and it's really fun because then you can take it. There's kind of like, there's a little bit of a cave by our little waterfall, like an overhang. There's yeah, like yep, an overhang, yep. but that's I maybe s- six or seven feet out. And so then you can kind of take the dinghy under there and you're literally mm-hmm. under rock. It's kind of fun. Okay, cool. So um, all things considered, we medium roughed it. We did one night really out on the tents out in the wilderness. We did yeah. one night here in this cabin. Um, Which, uh, just side note, if you ever break any of your ribs, do not try and camp. <laughs> it is a miserable sleep. Dan recently uh, broke a couple of his ribs. Yeah. And um, I think sleeping on the on oh, pretty no. much the raw ground <laughs> it last was night. Just the worst. Just the worst. But, but I did it. We've been I having got a lot of fun. the night. So let's go through. We've created a list here. Okay. We did it. We made it yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, 
These are things that are kind of staples in Breath of the Wild. Yep. Maybe even things that were new to. So, so one of the things that's fun about Breath of the Wild, and certainly one of the things that I like about it when I play, is that it's like, ooh, I actually feel like I'm in the wilderness. I actually feel like I gotta gotta do some of this stuff. Whereas maybe as much as I love Twilight Princess and even Ocarina, you're kind of like, oh, I feel like I'm in like a museum's version of wilderness. Yeah. You're like, I'm in this very curated. It feels, you know, if you look around, it looks like the wilderness, but you can see that there's invisible walls. You can, and not only that, with Breath of the Wild being so big, yeah. like traveling from one place to the next, there's a while where you're like, man, am I in the middle of nowhere right now? There are times, you yeah. know, you're just like, and you're like, well, time to just keep on huffing it, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we we went down and made a list of some of the quote unquote kind of like survival -y elements of Breath Things of the Wild. Things that made us feel linkish. And we're going to we're going to speak to how they work in the game and then how they <laughs> kind of we might speak to how they work in reality. Yes. Um now obviously it's, this is. I don't want this to be an episode of us like trashing on, on how unrealistic things are in the game, even though I think that will come up a little what? bit. But like, obviously, these systems in a video game are almost metaphors for the real life systems. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the first one we've got here is cooking. Oh, yes. All right. Now, Dan, you cooked a lot more this weekend than I expected, actually. I, I like cooking. I had no idea. When we first rolled in two days ago, I did bring a couple steaks along with yep. us to, to cook on the fire. You knocked those and out. You, well, you asked me a million questions, and I thought, oh, maybe he's never really cooked on a fire before. Mm -hmm. But um, so in Breath of the Wild, I know you don't cook that much in Breath of the Wild, actually, do you? I've never cooked anything. You never even tried? Well, so when I first played it, like, I guess the guy who teaches it to you. Mm -hmm, the old it, man. Yeah, the, I skipped that mm -hmm. wholeheartedly. I, or maybe I was just like, something else happened and I was focusing yeah. because I saw everyone else cooking and I was like, is that like a DLC? Like, what, when did you guys, <laughs> is there like an extra cooking expansion? And they're like, no, <laughs> the guy taught you like 10 minutes in. I was like, Oh, uh, show. Yep. Went through, have not cooked a single thing. And I now see. I don't want to because it's just out of the principle of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It is. As cooking systems go in games, I'm actually kind of impressed with it. It's actually pretty robust. Mm -hmm. It's it's good enough. It's a good enough cooking system that you can devise or create your own recipes. So like you can kind of like, it's not just a matter of memorizing abstract things to make food. The foods kind of logically line up with what you may want them to do. Okay. So, like, you know, there's, I mean, it's simple stuff like um, sometimes it's like you need wheat, egg, milk, and, and something to make butter or whatever, or like, and butter to make bread or whatever it is. Sure. Okay. But um, there's like modifier food. So, when you pick all the different mushrooms, you might have found like you pick up volt mushrooms, yeah, you yeah, pick yeah. up, I don't know, freezing mushrooms or whatever. So, you could make like, let's say, you, let's just say you could make a steak by, you know, killing a wolf or something oh great yeah wolf steak and which we did not do this weekend no there were no, we didn't kill any wolves. no wolves were killed this weekend i even though they come at you in the game i kind of don't love killing them oh any video game that has me like and it's it's kind of a common thing to like level up for the first couple like just go out into the wilderness and hunt the spiders or the the oh, wild dogs oh yeah i deep down i'm like dude they just leave them alone like, like level me up another way. I don't want to just go out to nature and destroy to become strong. Like, I agree. I agree. Um, you know, it's uh, I even noticed like so I've been I just dabble in Skyrim with that switch version yeah. over the last year or so. And when you come across a wolf there, they have to make them like almost werewolves. Oh, yeah. They're so gnarly mm -hmm. that then you don't feel so bad killing them. Yeah. Because I guess they like turn into monster category is what happens. Yep. But yeah, in general, I, I agree. But um, OK, so let's say you have like a couple steaks. And if you have a little bit of raw meat, let's just say. There we go. And you start to cook it, and maybe you could throw some butter in there. And it actually does make it have more hearts. Can you throw extra things in as you're cooking? Or is it like, no, you I'm putting them it. all in at once? Yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's more baking than it is cooking. You Got almost it. have to like find your build your recipe the way you want. And um, like if you, if you literally put a couple of different kinds of fruits together, you'll make mixed fruit and oh. stuff like that. Now, the fun thing is, is that there's kind of like modifiers. There's If you find like an electric mushroom... Let's say you're going to cook steak and mushrooms. I don't which think you, can. you should be putting electric mushrooms into food. Well, I know, but I in, feel in, like it's just asking what, for in Hyrule. It's a thing. So, <laughs> um, I think that should be the coin in Hyrule. That's a thing. So, <laughs> um, so wait, let's say you, you let's say you do um, raw meat, mushrooms, and and some butter. Okay, and maybe even some salt. Like you can find rock salt. But what if you throw like a wheel like, and a banana? Yeah, you can you can mess up recipes. Okay, I almost. Just use the F word. I almost said you can F up recipes. You did great. Yeah. Smooth right through it. We're good to go. <laughs> um, you can you but can you can it, make what's called dubious food. If you make co concoctions that don't make logical sense, yeah, you most of the time can make you just like kind of burn it and it's crappy food. Oh really? It's yeah. not like here's a steak and banana plate. Um, if it's, I mean, sometimes there's a few things you mix where you're like, okay, I guess that tracks. Okay, but usually you got to stay in the in the spectrum ah, of reality. Okay, I guess that's fair. Um, 
so like you can if you throw if you th- so so what I'm trying to say here though is like if you do raw meat mushrooms butter and salt which kind of in the real world you look good, I okay. think track that tracks you could even throw a pepper in there okay. or mushrooms right oh, I said mushrooms already but then if you use one of these electric mushrooms instead and put, and put it in there not only will the more cohesive your recipes are the more hearts you get back okay first of all sure um, the more they might make real sense in real the real world but then if you put this electric mushroom in there you actually might get um, or let's say you put like a, a, a hot pepper Okay. Instead of a normal pepper, you put one of these like spicy peppers. Sure. You put that in and it'll actually, when you eat this thing now, you'll get some hearts, but you'll also get maybe four minutes of resistance to cold. Oh, okay. I can get behind that. Yeah. So then you- So, so you can prep your meals to depending on where you're going. Like if I'm yeah. going to go- Yes, exactly. Hang out with the Gorons, like make some spicy pepper soups. It, it is totally realistic that you can, in fact, when you go to the first like horse stable up to Death Mountain, if you go at it from the normal pathway. I almost which, called it Mount Doom. Which I didn't find this horse. I didn't, I did not have this experience the first time I played Breath of the Wild. I went, I went to Death Mountain, obviously one of the sideways or something like that. Sure. But um, there's actually a lady that's like trying to sell you. She gives, she even gives you like five, I don't know, uh, frozen peppers or frozen mushrooms or whatever they are. Right. Yeah. And, and she's like, here, if you cook these, it'll help you uh, have resistance to heat. And so you can technically just cook yourself a bunch of meals and go up to Goron City and hang out and just keep eating and hang out until you like properly earn the armor or something like that. Okay. So there's things like that. So the cooking has mechanics to it. Um, I don't cook that much myself. You can, if you cook, if you have... In the game or in real life? In the game. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah, in real life, I actually enjoy cooking. Um, in the game, it is true that if you have two, so there is a net positive to cooking. If you have two pieces of raw meat Mm -hmm. and you cook them together, you will actually gain more hearts from the cooked raw meat together than you will from just eating two raw meats. Yeah. I was going to say, you can still eat the raw meat though, right? Like at any point you can just throw it down the gullet. Yeah. You can eat a mushroom and it'll give you a quarter heart. Yeah. But if you put a mushroom and raw meat together, all of a sudden you can get six hearts or something. And the fun little cooking noise. Like, like I've seen it. That wasn't bad. I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty proud of that one. For someone who's never cooked, I've seen people cook. Yeah, I know, it's not I know. like every time somebody starts cooking, I run out of the room screaming, "La la la!" Like I'm, I'm aware of it. But. I hear you. I actually, I have a little like confession. Is whenever my, whenever I cook in the game, I, and it starts the ding, 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 yeah. ding, and then it ends with ding, and he like goes, "Yes," you know. I can't help it. I have to take my right camera stick. And I slowly rotate around the cooking like it's a cutscene. Nice. Every single time I cook. We should get like uh, clips of like Hell's Kitchen and Gordon Ramsay where he's like berating people. There's a meme out there. Is it really? There's a meme ah. where um, Link has cooked dubious food. Yeah. And in the video game, dubious food has like the pixely like. like Does it look like, like garbage? Nude filter. or oh, You know, like ooh. you know, like when they or when someone like uses the finger on television. Yeah, they yeah, like yeah. Make, give it that pixely look. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the dubious food has the pixel look on it. Wow, it's so it's disgusting. It's so bad. Yeah. Wow, okay. It's so bad they can't even show it to you. So offensive. Like Link shame points. Like it just goes yeah. plus one. So there's a meme I'll show you sometime where Link's like head in hands, dubious food at the thing, and Gordon Ramsay's just yelling at him. It's kind of funny. It's freaking raw. Yeah. Send it back. Um, um, okay, so so at least as far as cooking in the wilderness, what if what are some of your main observations to maybe the differences? I guess since you don't cook that much, it's hard to talk. I about I would this. say the biggest, like, I don't think cooking's really the issue. It's getting the fire ready to like in real life. A, yeah, 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 yeah. You never have like Link sitting there for like twenty minutes, like <laughs> putting, blowing, like, okay, it's almost there, guys. <laughs> We're collecting get, pine cones. In about four more hours, we're gonna have some mighty freaking bananas, guys. Like. <laughs> They just pass right that it's like every fire is perfectly lit across all of Hyrule at all times. Yeah, and all, if you um, there's a couple different ways. We're actually, let's transition that into fire. Fire starting is literally next on our list, but we can still kind of keep talking about sure. cooking. Um, you to start off, there are a lot of fires that are already lit yep. in Breath of the Wild, and there's like two other ways to make fires too. Yeah, you can. Well, you can go up. To, sometimes you may go to a fire pit that isn't lit anymore for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe it rained on it or something, and if you collect flint. The rock, the mineral, yeah, and you put some flint down and you hit it with your sword. Ching. Theoretically, the spark can start the fire. You okay. have to put raw wood down too. You have to like yeah, find yeah. wood or whatever. That makes actually, sense. Actually, actually, I think with these preset campsites, the wood's already there. Yeah, but um, but you hit hit the sword or you with your just, metal. Like, can't you just cut down a tree? And, well, just, like, and that you gives just, you the raw. Yeah. yeah so technically, like, if you throw down raw wood and flint next to each other and swipe your sword, you can technically build a campfire anywhere yeah. in Breath of the Wild. Okay, that's a heck of a lot easier. 
than uh, than what we experienced this week. Oh yeah, and we like making fires. I love making fires, but it See, is different, isn't it? I was I never did. First the, of all, I don't have a master sword. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I never did the whole uh, wood and flint thing. I just always kept one flame weapon. Because then you so just the other way to make fire. like, and a fire. Yeah, just and one a swipe. fire. And a fire. Mm-hmm. Like, it's true. It's true. I actually, I usually cheat and just use a flame yeah, Oh, that's, too. I just keep one. It's mm-hmm. like super low, like damage doesn't do anything, but it's there when you Well, need we got to go out on the land here and find one of those flame blades. I'm sure they got, like, they're just stuck into the ground, right? That's how it works. I yeah, I think that's how all things work. Yeah. Um, fire starting. In Hyrule, that's a thing. <laughs> In Hyrule, that's a thing. Um, let's see. So, yeah, so the cooking, the, the, the getting the fire ready was obviously something very different for you with the cooking. This was your first time cooking with a hanging tripod, I know. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty neat. Well, you want to speak to that at all? I mean, it's, it's a hanging tripod. Mm-hmm. Um, normally, I don't even know what I, like, usually if, it's, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm camping, it's stick-based. Like oh, I, I don't, the, I put don't the thing on a Yeah. Whatever stick. we cook has to be impaled and then like brought over. And sure. Then, sure. I usually don't do too much like steaks or it's all like hot mm-hmm. dogs or sausages. When we were out on the land last night, when we were a little more remote on the land last night, we did stick based yeah. cooking. And even if it's dessert, it's like marshmallows. Like it's, it's everything because we don't have any of those. So. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Just take a chicken breast, like put it over there, just slowly turn it for like two hours. <laughs> well, you made chicken breast for lunch yesterday. Yes, but we had the thing. So it's kind of nice. We had the tripod. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fire starting. I don't. So obviously that's the big takeaway there is that you can't. It's So I actually was impressed that Breath of the Wild went so far as to allow you to logic out. Well, if I have. I'll call it raw wood, yeah. cut wood, and flint. Yeah. Like, they don't really tell you that maybe a character mentions it, but, like, it, that kind of tracks Yeah, yeah, logically. you can figure that out. Within yeah, the system, that cool. tracks. Mm-hmm. I remember I ha- the first time I did it, I was like, oh, hot dang. Look yeah. at me, starting fires. I have started fires with a flint and, uh, and a stone before in my life. Um, it's, it's, it, you can get it to start pretty quickly if you massively preset what you're sparking into. Okay. Like, you absolutely have to have, like, frothy little furry. Yep tree husk stuff you know what i mean I otherwise you're 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 it's because you really are only making sparks yeah so i guess that another major takeaway here even though as much as i commend the, the systems in breath of the wild obviously the uh the make one spark and we go to full fire yeah in, instantly is is i mean that would be a great superpower like <laughs> that would be awesome never have to worry about dealing with that ever again because there was a good like there was a couple fires that took us a straight solid couple of minutes to get it going and then you would die back out and then we'd have to put like a little bit more kindling on there and then it would die back out the big tricky one was yesterday which by the way it's still not raining here 12 the rain is late but i guess if it doesn't rain it doesn't rain um technically that's better so for our sound i'll talk I'm to just his manager i'm just i'm just uh cranky about it because i wanted to be recording outside so much and i was like i did this for you rain i came inside we're recording inside the cabin the because the second we... we're done it is going to torrentially start yeah to we'll be like more. all right see you, everybody and okay goodbye. bye and then boom like lightning hits the actual cap <laughs> um well that might bring us to rain let's do rain next actually oh, yeah. it, it, so the, the reason yeah one fire did take us a while because we um had a bit of rain just a little bit of rain yesterday afternoon i guess yep. And the everything we, was moist. We, went, we, we hiked out onto the land and brought our like tents with us and stuff like that. So we were we were pretty remote out there as mm-hmm. far as like we couldn't just like run back and uh, I don't know grab more paper and towel or something. So slippery, like one good rain and this whole place is like a slip and slide. You so. know that's a good point. Does Link slip in the game? I don't think he really does. He doesn't like sl- he runs over things very easily. Oh yeah, he's got some good boots. That's a that's even a- when he's barefoot though. He's just like I'm ready to go. That's true. Okay, wait a second. There's something that's something that's kind of cool about Breath of the Wild is that they did actually think about the boots a little bit because when you go into the desert or you go up into the snow, you walk slower oh, in yeah. deep sand and in deep snow until you get like the boots that are good for it. One of my little like joys of video games that are coming out now. Whenever anyone like walks through any snow or sand, I love seeing how long they keep the trail there. Yeah, you know what I mean? how long like, they keep it in like the yeah, memory because, cache, and then sometimes like some of these newer games are it's like Red Dead or God of War, like it's there for a while. But yeah. I always walk a little bit, look back, and I start a timer. I'm like, when do you reset? Yeah, and like sometimes a, those things uh, disappear from a time based thing. Oh yeah, and then in like uh, I know Mario Sunshine did a thing where, and I think maybe even some of the Zelda games do this, where it's like. 40 footsteps stay yeah. in the memory yeah and so depending on how far ahead then yeah. that's it kind of catches up disappear thing. yeah um but that's something i always love seeing in games just so if you handle in it yeah i i actually really appreciate that attention to detail too oh yeah or like little things like when link comes out of the water i think a lot of characters do this these days but he's got a little bit of shine a little in a little bit of dripping and then mm-hmm. he eventually dries off um so let's talk about 
what was it, rain? I guess yeah. we're going into rain. Yep. Well, we can just talk about all weather because we've hit it all. I mean, it hasn't snowed here, but we had beautiful sunshine. Then we got like last night, this morning, it was pouring. Yeah. Ugh. The fun little 6 a.m. trek back to the cabin. We, yeah, we were out on the land with our tents and I, <laughs> I'm super embarrassed. <laughs> this is great. This is great. I camp all the time. Mm-hmm. I love to He's camp. He's a pro. I like love being out here. I love other, I mean, I'm almost camping every other weekend in my natural life, probably at least once a month. Sure. On average, maybe, maybe there's little spurts, but so I love it so much. What if, if you set up a tent, what is something you think you should probably do then, David? Maybe if you know it's possibly <laughs> going to rain soon, what is, what's, I just, what is one thing that we should have probably done to your tent? So Dan and I trekked what out into the wilderness yesterday. Be? We trekked out into the wilderness and um, for the fun of it, we were both like, we both had our own like small tents and we were like, so I, we were like, let's each set up our own tent. Yeah. For the fun, you know, it's cool. Yeah, absolutely. You do yours, I'll do mine and we we'll have a little tent town. And yeah. Dug a pit for a fire like and everything. Terrytown, but with tents. Yeah. Terrytown. We have to go find some other, does, does your last name end with son? Nope. Oh, crap. I know. Ruined the whole bit. Um, so we got out there <laughs> and I. So we we keep some tents on the land here. Mm-hmm. I have a big like eight person tent that can very comfortably sleep. Maybe even four people. It's kind of got like two little wings to it. Got it. It's the it's the big tent that most of the time Gingsy and I would stay in if we don't stay in this cabin. But we also uh, got like a quick little like four person blue pop up tent, yeah. which was kind of similar to yours actually. Yeah, yeah. You've had your tent for a while, I think. You mentioned maybe a couple like, years. I, I think I've had it for two years. Used mm-hmm. it twice because you and Tiff sometimes use it. Yeah, when you're we camping. have a once a year camping trip that we usually try and make, but we've like missed it the past couple. Oh, okay, so. okay, fair enough. Um, so, so I, 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 since we were going out on the land, I was like, well, I'm not going to bring my bring my big green hefty tent. That's mm-hmm. going to be heavy for our hike. So I was like, oh, I'll bring the little blue one. And it was cool. It it has one of these like spring loaded kind of auto pop ups. Oh, it's very neat. It's you kind of like neat. throw yeah. it out there and it goes pop, 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 and you pull, you clean up some of the poles and there it is. Like an inspector gadget, like go, go gadget tent and you just throw it out there and it just pops open. I remember Gingsy found this tent and she was very excited about the fact that it kind of auto popped up. Mm-hmm. And I was lukewarm on it, but I did appreciate it sometimes when we'd come in onto the land real late at night. We'd have to pop I feel thing. like we're getting away from where we're trying to get here. What I'm trying to say is. What happened, David? I've pretty much never set up this tent. <laughs> Okay. All right. You, you got you're you're dancing around it. I know. I know. It's so embarrassing. I made a rookie mistake. I've been camping for more than twenty years, and we get the tent. I pop the tent up, and I think, well, it's been in its case for six a months. A little musty, maybe. Yeah. We have a watertight, weatherproof. Like we have a couple trunks that it was in, and it seemed yeah. good, along with some of the other tents and stuff. But I thought, well, I kind of want this to air out. I know what I'll do. I'll open all the windows. All the windows. But first, everyone. let me like put my sleeping bag in there and get my pillow set up and put my clothes in there and mm-hmm. get everything set up. And then I will open all, all the windows. All his cloth based sleeping goods <laughs> <laughs> in the open windowed tent with rain on the horizon. Dan popped up his tent and uh, it was all cl- it was all all yeah. closed up. Correct. Mine, mine's not even that fancy. I don't even have windows. It's just a blue thing. Yeah. I think I've got some spider bites on my ankle right now. I'm, I'm feeling it. Um, I think I acquired them in in the tent last night. But anyway, um, so then we continue about our day doing our stuff and it does start <laughs> to rain. And I don't even make the connection that the windows are, are open, I guess mm-hmm, you could say, mm-hmm. or, you know, down because they're open because they're flaps on a tent. And we continue for a couple hours to do other things. Yeah. Yep. And then we hike back to the site. Yeah. We start up the fire even. And then I kind of put it together and I was like, well, I'm going to be oh, going to bed in an hour or two. No. And I was like, wait a second. It might be very wet in there. Oh, I know why I thought this is because you found like a tiny puddle. Oh, I had in like yours. A sm- maybe there's a hole, but like maybe a coffee's mug worth of water had collected yeah. in one corner. And I think you even realized that maybe it leaked out of your water bottle or something. Yeah, yeah. It was like, like, like you on threw the water bottle so in like, there and maybe it was, it was sideways and slowly fine. dripped. And we were at the fire for an hour. Yep. No big deal. But you said that in like a wave, no pun intended, <laughs> of realization hit me. And I tried to play it cool and I was like, he did. He really did. Oh my goodness. <sighs> and did we also forget to mention that we didn't put the grain guard on top of our tent too? Oh God, I even forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know, Dan, I didn't know that there was a rain guard because it's, it's not a net up there. It's yeah, normal yeah. fabric. Yeah. But because of this mechanism that allows it to auto pop up, it doesn't have a point to it. So like a puddle of water collected on the top. And so, but trooper to you, you still slept in there. I like wasn't, you, I wasn't going to not. I was like, I'm doing, call, doing you didn't go experience. back to the cabin. You're like, nope, you just 
It was horrible. Slept in his own water bed. We went to Loved bed. It. Everything. There was like one of the pillows was only damp, not soaked. So yeah. I used that pillow. Um, Herman came into the tent with me and I kind of thought like, well, I mean, the sleeping bag was like sp- splashy, splash. Oh, like you yeah. touch it, splashy, splash wet. Yeah. Every time you rolled over, I heard like a slosh come from your tent. Just. Oh my gosh. It's true. You know, Link never has to really deal with that. Well, that's kind of, yeah. So, so actually we also had on our list here, like kind of like overnight experiences in Breath yeah. of the Wild. Um, but last, just to cap this thing off then I spent the night basically like I stayed in my clothes. Even mm-hmm. I found the driest part of the sleeping bag. <laughs> Kinksy and I have like a little like two person sleeping bag, which is really nice because you can like cuddle up and stuff when you're like out there in the wilderness. Yeah, absolutely. And, and honestly, there are nights where we are like spooning for survival because oh, it's cold because yeah. we'll, we still camp like in the winter and stuff. Oh, without doubt. Anyways, um, I kind of opened up the sleeping bag. I was like, I can't put this on me. Oh, yeah. It's, I'm going to get, if I get wet, even though we were very lucky last night and it only got down to about 60. Yeah. Which it's, is actually, it stayed fairly warm, yeah, which is nice. Did. Yeah. Because it's it, it easily can get down to like into the 20s a few months from now out sure. here. Um, <laughs> I immediately laid down. Immediately half my body was was wet. It just yeah. soaked it all in. I just dealt with it. I like put a flannel on and I just kind of, I was like, well, try to fall asleep as fast as possible. Yeah. And, and there it is. And I, um, Eventually, I woke up a few hours later, and I was cold. It was the air wasn't cold, but I was cold because half of me was wet. Yeah, like wet, not yeah. damp. No, wet. no, yeah, in standing water. <laughs> like. Basically, in standing water. I can't believe it. it's so stupid. Um, I can't believe this is the tale I'm telling to the public. Not I all love these it. other like cool tales. I mean, you guys, David is so he's at his element out here. Like David can start a fire with a match and a tree branch that's been <laughs> dipped in water. And then we just get to the site and he didn't roll up his world. I completely. Like, and it's just. <laughs> I biffed it. I biffed it. But I stuck it was through. Great. Herman kept me warm. 10 out of 10. You did it. You he did like, it. He laid on my legs and kept those warm. And then I took, I have like a little wool poncho that I wear out in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. And I used that as my blanket then. Oh, yeah. And I just got through. And then it rained for like the rest of the night. Oh, that's right. So somewhere, it just kept coming in. Somewhere around one or two, we got the kind of like the piddly little rain that's mm-hmm. actually kind of relaxing oh, sometimes. Oh, yeah, it was great. We had talked about how nice it sounds. Just yeah. like the small little drops. And I even thought about it. I was like, oh, I wonder if Dan's like feel, hearing was, relaxing noises over there. I was like. Instead, Gra- Dan was grabbing like, his ribs. Like, grabbing my ribs and going like, this is a good idea. We're having fun. But then <laughs> as I'm sleeping, I'm, it's stuff it starts to drip on my face. Oh. <laughs> and I started to get, like, drips on my face. And the first couple, I thought, okay, okay, condensation. But I thought, this is strange. There's a puddle on the top of this tent that I and you're like, don't often de- use. It's a design flaw. I really <sighs> thought, I really thought, I got, I think I got a little, I got a little blind to what was going on. Because I thought, like. These stinking designers that made their fancy little auto pop out tent got so excited about their p- auto pop out technology that they forgot to make a good tent. Yeah. It's really what I thought. He was literally putting the tent up, reached in the sack, and then pulled out the like rain guard thing you put on top. He's like, huh, well, this would have been when we were great. Pack- <laughs> yeah, we were packing up the tents this morning. It was fantastic. And I realized that there was a friggin' rain guard in the. <sighs> So hey, there it is. There it is. So, fun story. So for fun, me, fun story. That was a really rough, um, you know, I got some sleep, but it was like a really rough experience. And, and by the oh, time yeah. six o'clock rolled around, because we both agreed we'd wake up around six mm-hmm. so we could do stuff and record this episode and yep. everything. Six o'clock hit and I texted you and I said, Dan, I'm hiking back to the cabin. Meet me there. And, and actually, you were only just like a minute behind me. Yeah. But um, I was like, I don't want to be left out here by myself. Did you like per- see me on the trail? Because it was dark. Um, No. Yeah. I don't know how much I was behind you. Um, it was only a minute I got or two. out and I was like, David, David. Oh, I see. And then I just collected all my stuff that like I didn't want to leave out there. And then with my like pitch dark, using only my cell phone, like hiking through these woods that have only been through once or twice, <laughs> like going like, OK, you can do this, McCoy. Like, just, <laughs> You can find the trail. Just stay on the trail. <laughs> Falls fails. Scream real loud. Maybe he'll come back. Yeah, I think I could hear. You. I think even if we screamed from the site, you, you could hear. But anyway, like um, so that was what's. You know, fine. In a normal world, you have a responsible tent and all that kind of stuff. Or even if you're doing shelter survival stuff, you've made a shelter. Probably you're getting wet. Mm-hmm. So for Link, um, for Link spending the night out in the wilderness. He doesn't do tents. He, you know what, you know what they he? do in the game is sometimes he doesn't have to do tents. Yeah. Obviously, there's like these quote unquote hotels and, oh, the, towns and the beds at the horse things. Do you ever use those? Because um, you have to pay money for them, right? You do. You I'm do. I'm usually pretty stingy. I'm it's, like, It's, ah, it's we're like fine. 20 rupees to, just to sleep. And if you want to like change the time of day sometimes i do it okay um but then most of the most of the t- the towns have like little buffs mm-hmm. if you get in the super oh. comfy bed if you pay a little more if you pay 60 dollars for the really soft bed you actually gain hearts back or something okay and like in some of the towns the buffs are kind of cool it's like 
it's I don't even this is an example. I don't think this exists, but it might be like out there in uh, in the um, the bird town, <laughs> Rito <laughs> Village, the bird town. <laughs> it's more of a tree, right? It's like a yeah, yeah, up the up the mountain tree thing. Up, up yeah, the bird tree, up the bird, up bird mountain. Um, you know, maybe you, if you take like the fancy bed, then you get I don't even know like electricity, uh, uh, immunity, or, immunity something. or you get like two extra hearts that you don't even have. And they're okay. yellow. Yeah. That kind but of stuff. But it's like once you lose them, you lose them for good though, yeah. right? Yeah, but they're extra. That was a fun new mechanic in that one mm-hmm. where you got like temporary hearts with, with Midna – or not Midna. What's her name? Like one of her uh, – she's the water uh, – Oh, Mifa. Mifa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How Mid- she is, Midna sadly is not in Breath of the Wild. But yeah, but like cool. when you die, you get all of your hearts back plus like four or something like that. I think if like you like that. level up or stuff. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah she gives you a little cool. extra – that's why I always go like if I ever do replays, I always do her first. Yeah, because like that's just an amazing buff. Like I did Zora's first, but then I find that I usually hit Rito first now, so I can get that super jump thing. That like I did up Rito in the last. That was the last one I wanted to do because I thought it was the coolest, so I wanted uh, to save it till the very oh, end. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah, hanging out with a bunch of Falcos. So basically, Link kind of has tents. There are te- like slight. There are very vague survival tents erected around the land. Okay. A lot of times you'll come up on people that are camping. Okay. <laughs> usually they're getting attacked by m- monsters. Okay. And you kind of save them. And then you, most of the time, one of the characters will run back to like a little fire pit. And you, if you look, there's kind of like lean-tos or fabrics or rawhides that Got are it. basically tent-esque. Can you use those or is it just kind You can of- sleep. You, so, yes, you can sleep there. You can use them. But really, you're just using the fire pit that's next to them. Got it. Mechanically. You know using what I mean? Using everyone's walk. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, they have to have a... I think they have to have a cooking pot over the fire to actually cook on the fire. Can you carry a cooking pot with you or do you have to find a cooking pot in order to cook? I think you have to find a cooking pot in order to cook. Oh, Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, the fire will, we can kind of go back to fire here for a second. The fire will um, essentially help you time travel. It'll let you sleep, basically. It's like, hey, want to wait and sleep at this fire? Um, But the other thing that fire does have is that it does actually give off heat and it will melt ice in Breath of the Wild. Why would you need to melt ice? Well, maybe you haven't found all the shrines yet. Oh, oh! There are times where so if if there's like ice on the if you're out in the icy areas yeah. and there's literal ice, not just snow, but literal ice. Um, and so you, I keep that flame sword. Just pop, pop, so pop, the pop, flame pop. sword will work too. Yeah. The flame sword will melt Tell ice, you, but it's a lot fails, slower. Just go for a flame sword. It's it's slower to do. You yeah, know what I mean? It's, it's, like, it's it seems cooler seems though. Cooler. <laughs> I mean, you have a giant flaming sword. Mm-hmm. It's just. That's the cooler way to go. I'd like to say we used fire for heat, but it didn't get too cold. No, no. I wouldn't say at all, actually. Yeah. It got like it got like kind of autumn brisk in the evenings, mm-hmm. but nothing more than but like, like a, a sweater. Long or a long sleeve shirt in a, yeah. yeah. We're set. Or a wool poncho. Or a, well. a, a dripping wet wool poncho. Well, it's dripping wet now. That's why I'm wearing this vest. <laughs> Because we we had to hike back in the rain when this okay anyway. oh yeah well I, honestly I think we go to break here okay we've got a few others we've got navigation we've got um, critters we've got oh I think that's the rain mm-hmm. I don't think the microphones are picking this up yet not yet but, but as we go to break still. I see I re- see raindrops on the door all right I this is a really twisted I'm happy it's raining since we chose Feel to go in vindicated here. right now yeah, a little bit a little bit I gotta say. So when we come back from the break, you might hear some rain noises, and that's all part of it. Uh, Moral of the story is rain ruins everything, including climbing anything. Yeah, it makes everything really slippery. I've fallen on my butt like six times. Well, we'll talk. Let's talk about the slipping and the climbing when we do come back. We'll kind of return to rain. That's right. You know what I mean? Let's let's talk about that after the break. Cool. All right, guys. We'll see you in a bit. Welcome to our our new new podcast. podcast. Welcome Welcome to to our our new new podcast. podcast. This isn't working. Agreed. I think we're going to have to do it turn by turn. Well, now that you mention it, we are a brand new RPG video game podcast. Our very existence hinges on turn-based gaming. So join us on the Turn by Turn podcast, where we'll be talking about Pokemon, Fire Emblem, Golden Sun, Shining Force, Mother, and so many more. It's your turn to come and join us. (laughs) 
Hey, this is TC. And this is Jim from the Studio Demands It podcast. Where every episode we take a demand from a hypothetical studio. Which could be you. And challenge ourselves to conceptualize, pitch, and craft a film based on the stipulations. Or the demands. We are given. We talk about movies all the time. Particularly, we complain about the choices made in the films we've seen. We're nerds like that. And, of course, like any good nerd does, we automatically assume that we could do better. Even with the demands and restrictions that clearly must have been put on by a production. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com and listen to our previous library of episodes. Our library of previous episodes. Our precious library, Jim. <laughs> our library of precious episodes. <laughs> You're a pirate Smeagol. <laughs> uh, okay. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com to listen to our library of episodes. And submit your demand for a future episode, too. So go do that. Okay, bye. Okay, end of ad. And we are back. And Dan, wouldn't you know it, we we got to recording and the rain stopped. Yep. The second we stopped, it rained for like two seconds. And then we're like, hey, let's start again. And then it just, it's because it nature, totally happened. nature wants to listen. It's like, shh, they're starting up again. Guys, shh. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. So rain gets in the way sometimes. Sometimes you can deal with it. Sometimes it gets in the way. Um, let's talk. I've got navigation on here, but let's kind of still blend that with rain a little bit. What are your thoughts about how rain affects mm. Link and Breath of the Wild and, and how rain affects things in, in real life, oh, or at least it. how they affected us this yeah, weekend? Yeah. Uh, climbing wise, like it's one of those things where it's like, oh, you, you get mad because of course you can't climb as well when it's wet. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you would love to ignore it, but you're like, nah, yeah, that that makes sense. In and the you, game. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And you're just like kind of aggravated, but mm, yeah, you get it. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it then becomes part of the strategy. You're like, yeah. well, I guess I'm stuck on this ledge. Yeah. Or like I... In not as much rain, but I do love the uh, you can't wear metal in the middle of a field. Very cool. In the uh, thunder when it hits you. I always love that part. I don't think we had any real metal on this weekend. No, no except for that golfing trip we went on, you know. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There was also no lightning. So No, it's true. It's true. We mostly just had rain. No, no thunderstorms. thunderstorms. Apparently, later today, it's going to thunderstorm here as we leave the land. But anyway. Yeah. Um, but again, can you can you speak to Ooh. traction and uh, yeah, you can look at every <laughs> pair of pants that I have that can speak to the amount of traction that I don't have. And the mud here Ooh. is like advanced mud. It's uh, more powerful than Basically your Basically clay. Yeah. And so, boy, it is. I mean, so it gets in the traction of your boots and yeah. like what you used to have, like a nice grip is now just a flat clay based surface. Mm -hmm. We even talked about opening up like a ski resort. Just with all mud, because mud like you can there. just slide everywhere down here, like <gasps> everywhere you go, you can take two running steps and then just start gliding and yeah. you're like, you're 40 feet ahead. So Link kind of just slides down, whatever, you know, he goes up and then it's like a mechanic. And yeah. you know, technically with rain, if you're, if you have a ton of stamina and you time it just right, you can technically still climb in rain, meaning they allow you, let's just say they allow you to climb up five feet. But when you slip, you only slip down maybe four feet. Okay. So you technically advance even when you climb in rain. Yeah, but you're still using your gauge. Absolutely. Yeah, so like you, like there is going to be a limit. So it's not mm -hmm. worth it if I, I agree, empty I agree. the whole gauge out to get four steps up. And, you know? and and that's part of that strategy. But you're absolutely right. It 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 uses five steps or five feet of stamina to climb up there, and then you slide down. So sometimes if you're really close, you can be like, well, I'm just yeah, going to push through. Yeah, you can try and wing it, but yeah. most of the time, I'm just like, ah, we're just going to sit here for a little bit and see what happens. Can you speak to sliding on things? Yes. I've slid everywhere here. Oh, I'm trying to get you to tell a story about when you went down on your rear end over there. I mean, at which time? <laughs> really? You <laughs> slipped more than once? Oh, yeah. You didn't see, like, yeah. I saw one good one when we were hiking oh, yeah. out on... on right. Right it's, on the keister too, like straight out of a like a. It was comedy. like it was almost a mud banana peel slip. It was yeah. almost like a. It was almost like a Dennis Nedry in Jurassic Park. Whoop. Yeah, just like a like a Scooby Doo. Like you just <laughs> your legs just go floom, and then the next thing you know, your butts in mud. And you landed on the firewood we were carrying, but you didn't yeah. hurt yourself, huh? No, no. And we also had the hatchet in there, so like Don't, push come to what? shove. The hatchet was in that bag. Yeah, yeah, that's the way you're like you're okay, and like you have to do that like couple seconds of like I don't think I don't think I'm punctured. Yeah, I okay, we're good. And then you just take a couple extra steps and you're like, yeah, wow. okay. So, I did not know the hatchet was in there. That could have gone poorly. That could have gone very poorly. It could have had an, uh, what, an appendectomy there. <laughs> sure, sure. But no, no, it's a, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, guys. Thanks. Um, Thanks for the, the next wishes. topic that we have on the list, 
is uh, appendectomies. How, as you've been walking around the land out here, as you've been hiking around, yeah. how has your um, enormous sword in the ground hunting been going? Great. Yeah. I'm up to four or five, you know. You got four or five master swords? Yeah. Well, they're not all master swords. There's only <laughs> one master sword, David. <laughs> no, we were joking around. We were sitting, we were trying to come up with topics. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, ah, well, I mean, my sword hunting's doing fairly well, which is, again, one of my favorite parts of Breath of the Wild is just the random, like, super swords that are, like, in, like, I don't think they're in the four quadrants or anything like that. But, like, if you journey to a tall mountain, if you go far enough this way... They kind of make it worth it for Yeah, you. and you're just like, ah, cool. Except, you know, and it's... Love or hate it, the like all your weapons eventually break. Right. But you're like, I went all the way up to this mountain to find this flaming sword, and then it broke. And, I, <laughs> and, it, and it discourages me from using it. I, I, I agree. Mm-hmm. Like I a mean, lot the, of the idea, the the one thing is, is, as you play Breath of the Wild enough, anyone as anyone plays it enough, you start to find so many more swords that you can't even carry because you're maxed out. Yeah. That for me, that started to tip the scale of me being like, well, I guess I can just burn through these swords. Yeah. Maybe I'll save the super strong ones for certain spots, but for the most part, um. I've gotten a lot less nervous about using swords. But yeah. at the same time, once you get the Master Sword and once you get the Helian Shield, you kind of don't use anything else because they're just so great. Yeah. I also, uh, Playing the game, it made me... Have, like, I use bombs so much more in this one just because, yeah. like, I have the weapons that I like and I don't want them to break. Mm. So if I can get, like, some bubble goblins or whatever they are from a distance, mm-hmm. just chuck a bomb at them, be like, ah. We'll yeah, that is fun. just keep doing this for a while. Um, the bombs are not quite as strong in this game oh no it is raining out there oh phew thank goodness oh good i see some some drizzle out there but um but um yeah the bombs are not particularly strong in breath of the wild compared to like the bombs in you know a bomb can completely take out a bad guy in some other zelda games yeah and with this one it definitely just maybe you gotta do it three four times say, they seem more concussive like not like yeah, like, fire, kind of, like they throw them like, say, yeah. like they, they blast them away mm-hmm. their health isn't really diminished but like if you're next to a cliff yeah. or something like yep sorry charlie yeah if you can if you can hit some other environmental thing that'll then do the rest of the damage mm-hmm. that can be that can be fun i will say that in master mode the bombs the enemies are even stronger and enemies slowly regain health even oh, good. even for any you know sounds great to take it so the bomb strategy is difficult mm-hmm. in master mode because almost by the time you can hit them again they were already starting to regain the health that they took down. I always love the, they're chasing you, so you just hit a bomb, just drop it as you're going, and then oh. like, three, two, one, boom. <laughs> like, gotcha. Yeah, you just like throw it down but, as you go. I, I, and if I'm wrong, I apologize, but don't they eventually start avoiding the bombs at some point? I feel like they, like if you do it too many times, they like run around the bombs. Oh, really? I think M- so. Maybe. Maybe they're always very curious about them in the beginning, the the mo- moblins. Mag-ob- not the, not the moblins, bokoblins. So many different ways to put the accents on so many different words um, in Zelda. I think the reason that is is because, at least over here, we very rarely hear the official creators speak some of these words. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like um, even even Sheik, there was a lot of times where people were calling them all these different, yeah. c- calling them well, all these different kinds of things. And the language, not the language, uh, like the dialogue in these games, you never hear anyone say their name. Right, you're like, reading it. You're, you're never going to have somebody go like, hey, Link, watch out for the bagabla blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. Like, you just see it and you go like, well, I guess you phonetically read it in your head and you're like, I guess that's what it is. You're you absolutely know? right. And I think that's why people have all their different ways of saying the different Zelda words. So we never get too upset if people are saying things right or wrong or otherwise. The closest we've gotten is now we're starting to get like, in like the DLC in Age of Calamity, I think some of the characters who are talking more might refer to some of the baddies. So you're starting to get some, okay. I guess, technically official pronunciations of some of these baddies. But anyways, uh, or, let's see. Uh, in the beginning of Super Smash Brothers, it's Ganondorf, like when you click him. So yeah, I got yeah, there are moments down. like that. Yeah. Link, I got those two down pat. I always so, battle uh, against Ganondorf. Ganondorf. <laughs> His name's Ganondorf? Wait, which one's the Ganon? How about chopping trees? Woodcutting. We got that one on here. Uh, yeah, no, that was fun. Uh, you kind of lured me here with, uh, like, if we're going to go out camping and doing this kind of stuff, I was like, let's do, like, you know, outdoor stuff. I mm-hmm. love it. And you're like, well, we're probably going to have to chop some wood. Chop a lot of wood. And I was like, oh, just a big old axe. Yeah. yeah. I got some photos of you out there. But um, we, we the last couple times that Gingsy and I have been here, we've been working on more domesticated projects. I'm mm-hmm. building, like, a little bathroom shed and stuff like that. Yeah. And we've actually kind of let our wood pile... Um, not be replenished. So it was a lot of fun that we were able to do some of that. Dwindle, yeah. I think by the time we got down here, Diminish. there was like four logs yeah. when we got here the other night. That was fun. Um, we cheated and bought some. Though. So with, well, we were, because we were coming in late. Yeah, it was going to be dark. Honestly, you came to me. You said, Dave, maybe, maybe, maybe we should buy a little wood yeah. just as a backup. And I was like, that is actually a very good idea. Yep. 
we were already out of Meyer charging up the car and it was like, let's, we got the time. Got let's em. just get it. So that was helpful to come in on that first night. But um, let's see if we're comparing it to chopping wood in Breath of the Wild. I'm I sure think, you've chopped down some trees I in Breath of the Wild. I think Link has it a tad easier. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put that on record. Like one quick axe swing to a tree mm-hmm. like, or two or three times. Or one to cut it down. One to- it might be two. I know you can technically cut down a tree like with a normal sword, but you have to heck, 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 which is kind of cool. Like the axes have more power. Yeah. But you're also sacrificing swings. You know, it's yeah. like, yeah, you can if, wear if it's an down axe a- that you love. You don't want to use it for trees. It's you true. Know? It's true. And those axes have a lot of, I guess you could say stamina on them. You can cut down a lot of trees with them. Eventually they'll break. It's not, I don't think axes break too often for me. Um, and you can technically cut down a tree with just a sword too. Yeah. It takes a long time, um, but he doesn't seem to get winded at all. No, no. And that's like, so the idea of coming here with this giant axe, and I thought it was going to be like on the stump that you see all the like the Manly Men movies. Yeah. Man, I swung that or swung that axe like twice, and I was like, I'm out. Like, this is <laughs> way too much. I don't have the arm strength nor the lung capacity to keep this up. I was like, let's go buy more wood. This was a, this was a bad idea. <laughs> we ended up cutting more wood. We stuck through it, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, it's, you, it's, I think people forget how tiring it can, when you're, when you're processing, yeah. processing wood. Oh yeah. We have, we have a pile of dead trees out here that got pushed over when a bulldozer put a little gravel driveway in for us. Yeah. Um, and that's what you and I were working through. Mm-hmm. And when you're like taking full 40 foot trees and you're ha- hacking off, you're chopping off all the branches, you're oh, processing which is, them which down is different a, things. A nightmare in itself. You're sawing through yeah. the trunks. Like, Heck yeah, man. It takes a lot of work. Yeah. In, in Breath of the we Wild, had, the tree falls over. And I was getting the tree winded. falls over, turns into a log. Yeah. And then you whack Pre-cut, the log with an axe. Tied and then it goes, with a little stirring and bow. Almost like the stuff we got in Meyer, I just yeah. realized. <laughs> like, I would just hit it with an axe and like trees instantly are like, here you go, sir. Like, yeah, Link buys his wraps wood. himself up in plastic. Like, oh my gosh. Well walk to the now, fire With forest. that said, though, like still, that is super cool that you can even do that in Breath of the Wild. Oh, that yeah. You can cut a tree down, that it has physical properties. Oh, yeah. That you can turn it into firewood. Super awesome, but yes, definitely different. I don't know if Link loses that much stamina when he swings. Certainly, I've never run out of stamina. I don't think you do. Yeah. I, I'm just worried about like every axe and every weapon has so many hit points, you know? So even if a tree takes one, I want to cut down this stuff. I'm I'm just so protective of the weapons that I like yeah. that I'm just like, I don't need a fire. Let me like, ask you I'll this. Just, I'll just sleep if there by was a, If the game had a almost like a life meter for each weapon or how many, you know, it's level of wear and tear it's taken an could, indicator. Yeah. Would you like that or dislike that? Cause um, right now it's kind of random. You're kind of like, I've kind of, yeah, yeah, it. you don't. Yeah. I mean, it'll say like, it's getting low, which means so you have like, like two more hits. Yeah. Um, I think I would like it because then I feel like I could go into a battle more prepared mm. and know that like, I have a bunch of weapons that are going to last me through this. The last thing, I mean, once you have the master sword, even the master sword doesn't have a life. It's just like, nope, well, energy's getting low. The master sword, technically, when its life wears out, is that's when it says the master sword's low on energy. And you can't yeah. use it for a while; it needs to recharge. Yeah, that's their way of like having it break, but they don't want. But you the can't master break, yeah, sword to can. break. It can't like um what narratively break, yeah. so it has to recharge. That's how they do it. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I I will tell you in Skyward Sword, mm. um, that was the first time that weapons had like quantifiable durability okay or not weapons but at least the shields okay so like your shields take damage as you play shields i get and, and, like, even, and they have a little life bar like even in ocarina time if i recall if you have like a wooden shield i think even breath of the wild like wooden stuff like if somebody spits a fireball at you goodbye shield unless you yeah. like unequip it and then put it up and then bring it back out the elemental based damage has been around for many zelda games and that's there yeah like, you know a metal shield even in Skyward Sword, if an electrical enemy attacks you, like you get zapped. It, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't work against that. Which I'm down for. Which shields really will like burn. That. that certainly happened in Ocarina. Um, um, let's see here. Chopping trees, finding treasure. Finding treasure. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. We have I, not. I would say nature is the treasure <laughs> that we found, David. <laughs> um, there's nothing, Take not that, too Hallmark. much that pops up here that I don't expect. The, the creek, when there's a lot of rain, sometimes like, funky little things will like 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 come down the stream i'll I'll admit like i found a hot wheels car once we found a um have you ever thought of grabbing a um like a metal detector and just kind of no i haven't thought of that just just to see and you may get nothing but every once in a while i'd be like ah something's here there was a on the uh, there a portion of this land like the far side of this land is along kind of like a a highway Mm -hmm. and um 
I was walking the back part of the land about a year ago and I did find like a computer monitor that I'm sure someone just chucked out of their pickup truck when nice. they're driving along. That was really frustrating. Yeah. That's not treasure. That's garbage. Yeah, that's that's but, just garbage. Well, you know, you take care of it. We haven't really had too many. We haven't had any problems like that since. And honestly, this was uninhabited land when we bought it, with the exception of the person owning it and sometimes like yeah. driving back here or whatever. Um that that it, that computer looked like it was from the eighties, so it, oh, wow. it was probably it could sitting have there been for like thirty years. Wow. Yeah, okay. It was definitely like a big CRT, that kind of thing. Yeah, no, no real, no real treasure, no real treasure, other than our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got hunting on here. We did not hunt any animals. Nope, nope, and we were not hunted by any animals, which I think is also very important. You to were note. very concerned about bears I'm as we came. Here. Always concerned about bears, <laughs> even in the city. Yeah, I go to the <laughs> zoo and I'm like, guys, bears, so like. <laughs> Yeah, everyone hold on like they're terrifying we, we we don't have any bears out here at least that's what our some of our family neighbors have told us yeah apparently some bobcats a lot tons of deer okay tons of deer walking all over the place and um apparently turkeys though i've never seen that yeah um we had a gecko join yeah, us in yep. the cabin here and then he jumped in my bag for a while he it was weird we were walking up to the cabin and this little cute little gecko like Scurry. runs to the door <laughs> and went under the door yeah so i gotta put a little bit more and you're like, oh, there's no way he got in there. I was like, he didn't go through the He's bottom. Like, oh, no, I've, I've, I've seen this And then we walk door. into the cabin, and it's not a large cabin. It's like 12 feet by 14 feet. It's just like a, just, sure. it's almost like a tiny house. Yeah. It's almost like a little tiny house. Yep. And um, for some reason, I saw him posing on your clothes in oh, your yeah. duffel bag. He wanted us to know that he was in my stuff. He was like, head up. Like. And then uh, we walked a little closer. Jumped and in my sweatshirt in. and just was like, had a field day with it. I don't know. You haven't found him in there again. Have no, you? he was on the window. Oh, or, he came out? Yeah. He was just, he, he had his fill of what he wanted. So that was the close, I guess that, I guess it was a weird, oh yeah, hunting animals. We um, had no intention of hunting any animals. I think nope. there is some land around here that some people hunt on, but not, not for us. And um, a lot of, a lot of animal excrement. On the land here? Yeah. Notice we found my, some deer droppings. Yeah, my, my fair share of deer droppings. Yeah, yeah. There was a, there was bobcat droppings I saw last time I was here. You did point out that I thought was pretty cool. Like you can see in like the tall thickets where like the deer will just decide to like camp out for that night. Oh yeah, the deer beds. Like the little, yeah, do we deer beds? I mm-hmm. had no idea. Like and so it was kind of fun to see and learn something new about those. Yeah, the, you can if you kind of know what you're looking for, you can even see the deer trails. Mm-hmm. And they, st- I've I have now. I almost said dug a bunch of trails, but I have at least like gone out there with a machete and occasionally a weed whacker and like started to carve in some trails on the land. Yeah. And I have noticed that the deer will take advantage of those trails. Oh, I'm like, yeah. oh this is a lot easier. Thank We're going this way. you, David. But then you'll see when they like cut off. Yeah. So sometimes when you're on the trails, you can see the deer trails, presumably deer. I, I, they look at deer trails to me, um, like kind of scoot out. And it's true that oftentimes close to those little scoot out points, you can find the deer beds, which yeah. is almost like. The grass, it's almost like a mini tornado. Yeah. Or like crop circle, well, like pushed the grass down. It's like anyone who has like a dog, like in there, before they get really ready to lay down, they just like do that couple of circles. Circle, yeah. And then they're like, and then they plop, you know? So I'm sure the deer just is like, this area looks good. Do a couple laps. I think and so. And we're down. Um, Herman does this thing back at home where he circles his dog bed and mm-hmm. kind of digs at it. Yep. Does, does, does um, your dog do that? Yeah, Roof says that all the time. So that's the thing. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. It, okay, I, that weirds me out, but yeah. I would say, though, last night it was like three or four in the morning. Um, I, I thought you and Herman would definitely hear it. There had to be, I assume it was a deer or like, uh, like I had to be just like, like you heard that, an animal. Last yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in the distance. So it's not like it was like at our campsite, mm-hmm. anything dramatic. But since whenever we do hang out, Zelda is brought up quite a lot. <laughs> uh, we talk about it. Um, all I could think about was that majestic moose a creature with <laughs> the, the glowing the antlers. Oh, yeah. You know, that's like far up in its own clo- yes, cove. And you okay. can tame it. I think somebody told me that one time. If you're very careful, you can, yeah. And I was just like, well, there he is. And he's just hanging out there. He's I just up. assume there's like a glowing moose just like walking like a couple feet away from our area. It is fun, I will admit, um, especially when you're alone. Because the last thing we have on the list here is navigation. Okay. Um, it is fun to be out on the land and... You know, you and I have mostly exist on this one third where I have put some trails. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You can kind of go north a little bit and then it gets a little bit more rustic. And there are times where I'm out there mm-hmm. and you're just kind of f- trying to figure out what is on this land and, yeah. and adventuring. Um, maybe not too dissimilar from what Miyamoto did as a kid when he designed the first Zelda game. There we go. He famously in Kyoto would like go out famously. He's told a story that is now famous. Okay. Um, he wasn't famous when he went out there. Um, he's always famous. He's always famous in my heart. Um he would go and like he'd find caves and he would explore the wilderness and he loved being out in the wilderness h- hiking in raw land yeah 
And uh, he actually did find a cave, maybe a few of them on the, on the kind of the back country areas of, of this mm-hmm. town he lived in. And he actually went into a cave and almost got lost one time. And that yes, it was a massive inspiration for him when he designed the Is that first where the Zelda dungeons game. came from and it's all that absolutely stuff? absolutely where like, the okay. dungeons came from. I dig it. In fact, I've already spoken about this on a different episode, but the dungeons for the first Zelda game, there wasn't an overworld. It was just the dungeons. Yeah. It was just this cave experience. Then they started thinking, oh, maybe we want to also capture the whole traveling to these different caves, Got it. dungeons. Um, so he loves the wilderness and that inspired him to make Zelda. And I got to be honest, there are times where I'm walking around in the wilderness and you're kind of like, it's not that you're pretending you're Link, but you kind of remember moments in Breath of the Wild. You remember moments in Twilight Princess where you kind of like you've gone through a forest and mm-hmm. you're like, oh, this is not the real version of yeah, it. But, but like, like this, it's similar. This would be what it would be like. Yeah. You know? The extra, the extra, there, there are, the, I, I will say the creek that we have on our land here is aesthetically beautiful and it does sometimes look like those all those little tiny water fountains that happen like in some of the Zelda games. Yeah, yeah. There are moments where I'm out here on the land and I'm like, this just is a shot from Breath of the Wild oh, yeah. or from, from like, Skyward Sword Twilight Princess. This is concept art on the new VR version. Of, yeah. um, and those are my favorite spots to hang out on the land out oh, here. Yeah. I, a lot of times those things end up showing up as pictures in Instagram, like I said. But uh, So when it comes to navigation, Breath of the Wild, navigation for you uh, on land, well, well, I mean, any it, differences? No, it's really helpful. You, you know this place basically will... Most of it, like the back of your hand. There's like a chunk. There's like a third that I've still yet to go on. But this yeah. is where the land. What is it? Like that's the elephant graveyard. The sun doesn't touch <laughs> there, Dan. You should not be going in that dinner direction. <laughs> yep. And this morning at six a.m. when I'm trying to find my way back, I'm like, I'm gonna wind up in that freaking elephant graveyard. <laughs> And it's going to be like two hours and he's going to come look for me and I'm just going to be like drenched, wet and like, I, I don't know where I'm going. Um, but there is no compass. I don't get to pause the game and look at a map. That's true. Um, this That's is, true. You're, you're just, I just knew that the cabin was like northeast, mm. nor, northwest. When you're coming back this morning. And I just like find trails that try and continuously lead me back mm. to that area. And then once you find the creek, kind of, you pointed this out to me. Yeah. You were like, there was a couple trails and I kind of got confused and I thought, well, take the one that goes up. Yeah. Because we're trails, trying to get to the other side of the valley. Yep. Go, you're out at the bottom, go back up now. Mm-hmm. And very much like uh, any of the Zelda games, like it's kind of fun that we're out here huffing it, doing what we can, but need be, we can jump in and head to town. Like we're not, we're yeah. not super duper far away from like real The reason Jinxie and I liked this spot so much is that it is magical once you get down into the valley. Oh yeah. And I mean, if I may, I'm not, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I think you literally said like this waterfall, it feels like a magical waterfall. Oh yeah. 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 It's very cool. It's, it's, it is a place of peace. And oh, yeah. I, I, I go there often when I'm thinking about podcast stuff, when mm-hmm. I'm writing my papers for school, sometimes I'm just relaxing when I'm reading my Zelda manga, yep. I read it down there by the waterfall. It's great. And I'm so grateful that we were able to come across this. But with all that said, um, it's true that the nearest like town town, like there's like a Kroger yeah. and a Lowe's is about 20, 25 minutes away. Yeah. So like you can, you know, someone rolls an ankle, you can still yeah. get to safety. Kind like of I don't feel like it's nice because I can feel like I'm completely alone out here. Mm-hmm. But I also know that I am not in the emergency. Oh, no, I'm alone out here kind of thing. Yeah, like, like it I, doesn't get it, it's, it's an amazing real. balance that yeah. you yeah. can feel part of nature, but also know that like there is a lifeline very close if we need it because out here there is no teleportation no i no. just realized and you can't whistle a horse close <laughs> i mean i try but yeah opponent never shows up he whistles all the time out herman here. shows up which yeah, is weird, her- but <laughs> difficult to write Herman's herman. just dragging us all the way to the hospital like <laughs> oh what a trooper <laughs> he's such a good dog he'd do it but uh he'd try <laughs> like um I'd be like leave me herman save yourself you know, I to speak. You know, you, when you said there's no map out here, you're absolutely right. I think in time, as I, I'm kind of trying to put little campsites out on the land, so more people can can come yeah. out here and join us. But um, w- originally, when I was when it was all just undeveloped and it was kind of all no man's land mm-hmm. land, I actually did run a little GPS map on my phone, and I knew from our when we bought the land, we were given like the parameters of it. You sure. know, the the, the yep. geography yeah, of the yeah. land, like the little coordinates. So I kind of had that mapped out on Google Earth. And then I started walking through the wilderness and I just had my phone running this GPS thing, which would draw a GPS line for you. Okay. And you could actually export that K- KML data or KMH data. And I imported it into Google Earth. Yeah. And I started like overlaying it onto the Google Earth photography. And so I could actually finally get, I could get like a concept of what things were where. Yeah. Where the waterfall actually was, where mm-hmm. like the different creeks were, where the different areas that might have a good campsite spot on yeah. it. And um, I refer to that Google Earth map all the time. I still think like, 
fast forward like two, three years when you got a little bit you know, nicer things here and there, you know, um, you're going to have like, like in the mall, like you are here, <laughs> just like little things straight throughout. Be like, uh, hey, try the food court. You are here. Well, with that said, I grew up, um, my family did a ton of camping growing up. Okay. Uh, I've, I've said this in the past and like all of our massive major vacations were basically state parks. Sure. And they were all basically in the Midwest area. Okay. You know, with that said, that's why we hadn't really flown out of the country for the longest time and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. We 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 vacationed all the time, but it was always maybe a day or two away, yeah. and it was you know usually in the woods, and we were camping. Sure. You're outdoorsy, so a lot of that was well. What the point I'm trying to make is a lot of that was in state parks. We very rarely would go to private campgrounds. We really enjoyed that the state parks had obviously a little bit more nature in them. Yeah, or at least my parents did, and I guess I, I well, uh, a up structured, on that. safe nature. You know, I suppose so. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, so I have an affinity for. The little trail markers and the kind of you are here maps mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I, I, I do think it could be fun to make some like raw wood. Maybe you would burn it in yeah, like it signs of like in. at least yeah. pointers of where the trail, what trail you're about yeah. to go on. Or like even just like campsite one, campsite two. So yeah. people are like, hey, you just go ahead and you guys can stay in campsite three tonight. You know? I do. Th- well, that's kind of the idea. I do think that when I uh, in- inevitably make these signs that I'm talking about right now. I think I am going to make them kind of like the wide because po- there's signposts in all the Zelda games too. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you can literally read them, but sometimes you have to go up and it shows a little sign of like Rito Village that way, Zora yeah. Village that way, whatever. Um, but I think I'm gonna. I don't know if I. I don't. I mean, I don't want to turn this into like a weird little like Hyrule themed piece of land. Yes, you do, David. <sighs> I mean, I do, but you I don't. do too. Like, but I do think that I'm going to need to evoke those aesthetics. Yeah. in like these signs. I mean, it's just. I mean. It, I mean, I don't think you should like have like, you know, the Hyrule symbol etched in all of them or anything <laughs> like that. But like, it's just for directional purposes, yeah. you know, be like, hey, camp this way, you mm-hmm. know, like, because you do have like, if you're not super familiar with it, you can get kind of turned around back here. Like it's, it's not. Yes. Yes. So like, it's just a good directional path. And mm-hmm. it'll I really got help turned, people we out. went off the trail uh, yesterday a bit and mm-hmm. I was looking for a certain creek and I got turned around. Yeah. Remember, I couldn't find it. Yeah. You were like, there should be a creek here. And yeah. I just, yeah. I was like, okay. That yeah. sounds like- I was really I really got disoriented for a second. Yeah. Um and it's also interesting as being out here throughout the different seasons Ooh, yeah. is that you can get a little disoriented because things look very different mm-hmm. in the fall, spring, winter, and summer. Oh yeah. All right, all right. So ultimately, um closing closing thoughts, closing comments about uh Breath of the Wild and how real it may or may not be. Well, it's uh I, it's it's definitely interesting to like huff it and then like so if I go home and I play Breath of the Wild I'm gonna I'm gonna get kind of mad I'm what? not gonna lie oh, oh what's that why yeah, because he's gonna like chop down a tree in two <laughs> swings and I'm like this is a lie you know like <laughs> he's gonna like make a pre cooked fire and like all this other stuff and I'm like it took us four I'm gonna like Tiff th- this game is lying okay it is not like this she's like Dan you're fighting a half centaur with a shield like maybe suspend disbelief a little yeah. bit like, and even nah. little things like technically link runs at like 20 miles an hour yeah like you really like, don't like, notice it but he's actually running way too fast i'm gonna have like me. a false sense of superiority but like it's not like this at all <laughs> tiffany mm-hmm. i i have to admit a lot of times when i play breath of the wild i actually prefer to only push the analog stick halfway and have him walk because yeah. it just feels so real oh yeah and you can actually then like look at the trees as you're passing mm-hmm. them i'm not one of those i'm not really much of a runner yeah but anyway I'm more of the roller. Like I'm the guy. Anytime we're going from point A to point B, I just assume oh, rolling is faster. So blah, blah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, fair enough. That's an, that's definitely an Ocarina of Time thing. Yeah, and I think you did move a little faster with a roll in Ocarina of Time. There's like a gimmick. You have running backwards and rolling. You actually run a little faster than going I forwards. Always, I always expected Link after I stopped him, like I just like, and just like vomit. <laughs> just be like Puke. please, no more rolling. Like he finally <laughs> talks just to beg me to stop rolling so much. Like. He's like concussed. Uh, He's got like cuts all over his head. Yeah, I like, think my takeaway is that I, I think, I think obviously the video game is not going to be as, as I guess difficult or as detailed as real life. Obviously, obviously. But I'm also really pleased that the makers of Zelda decided to bring so many of these elements into yeah. the game. Yeah, and and even though they are presenting them as maybe metaphors or maybe like reality light. Yeah, it's really cool that that you can logic out that, that you could start a fire with flint and wood yeah it's really cool that you it's, can logic out that if something's cold it might matter like there is temperature yeah. there's sound all that if kind it's of raining you shouldn't be trying to climb rock walls or start know? a fire yeah it's like, like that, that all lines up yeah it's like yeah i mean anytime that happens you're like this makes sense i'm not mad about this mm-hmm. but all these things where they're like like cutting down a tree with like two swings and all of a sudden nicely bundled wood sitting there i'm like this liar i know it's a touch comical and i also think that that's you know that is the game developers um I mean, they're not going to um, make you spend like two hours, all that other it's stuff. Not, it's so not, it makes sense. It's not a survival, not survival horror game, but it's not one of these like 
survival sim games. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I, I have one or two of those games. And one of them's kind of fun. They drop you on an island I've talked about in the past. And you like literally need to find the plants to make the rope and literally yeah. make the rope and then finally find a, a rock and finally make an axe and all that kind of stuff. I call it's those fun. the give up and die games. The give up and die games. Yep. And so I think if you had to do all of that, Zelda wouldn't be, that's yeah. not the oh, point, no. but it's nice no. to have it in Zelda. Yeah. It's nice that it's sprinkled in, but Zelda knows what it is. Yeah. You yeah, know, absolutely. They, they'll, they'll incorporate little things to enhance what they core are, mm-hmm. um, but they're not going to change like the basis of what we know and love about this franchise yeah. just because they all went camping one day and wanted to I have one it. other fun little tidbit to maybe close us off here. Um, you and I both noticed that, um, like you said to me at one point, you're like, geez, Dave, you must get so fit being out here on the land. Oh my like, gosh. You're constantly walking. We're not eating a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're eating enough, but you're not eating. It's not like you're like sitting at a couch eating like half a pizza. We have not snacked at all and I miss it. Sometimes Gingsy and I snack, but it's because you like literally need more fuel. Oh yeah. It's more like you like are out on the land and you're like, oh, I need a banana. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, anyways, I wanted to say that, you know, to the point that you were making about how um, uh, the, you know, it wouldn't be fun or whatever if it really was actually that detailed. Yeah. Chopping down. If you really had to sit there for, if you had to like use stamina. Oh yeah. To like re- literally saw a tree into all these bits, mm-hmm. probably it wouldn't be fun. Yeah. And I think there's a great example of that. Um, wh- the the um, so right now when in Zelda when you eat food it gives you hearts. Got it. That's a very new way to get hearts in any other every other Zelda game. You get a heart by finding a heart. Got it. Yeah, you know they just I mean? like float to the ground. They don't just they? float to the ground, or they're just in Skyward <laughs> Sword. They grow on flowers. Or there's like a container that at the end of the boss battle. Yep. Yeah, another heart container. Right. Absolutely. Or fairies or milk. Fairies will do it. Milk will do it. There are ways, but yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, that's interesting. But essentially, you know, you get hearts. You, you fill your hearts up by finding hearts. Yeah. Um, when they were originally building Breath of the Wild, and I think a lot of a lot of fans know this already, but I think it's a good way to finish this episode. Um, originally, when they were designing, the team was designing the like food cooking system. The the counter to that was that Link. Um, we just had a big bug fly past yep, our face. Massive. That's a low buzzing. I think I got to get the fly swatter, or at least try to get this guy in a cup and let, get him out of here when we're done recording. Anyway, he's right on the window there. Um. Um, that's a whole nother thing that like seasonally there was like so many ticks during yeah. June. I think Link should be swatting it more like mosquitoes. Like, That'd be kind of funny. If you're ever just walking, he should just be like, God dang it. Like, ah. <laughs> like, like in the area, like slapping ah. his, his neck. That's kind of funny. That's kind of funny. Um, but anyway, so they were building the food mechanic system, Dan. Mm-hmm. And the idea was the counter to that was that Link would get hungry. Yeah. So he would always constantly get hungry. There'd almost be a hunger oh, meter. I hate it. I know, I know. Oh, but I let me it. finish. So he, the idea was, okay, he, he, as he uses his energy, he gets, he loses his energy, almost like a really slow stamina meter. Yeah. He loses energy. And if it goes too low, he can't run anymore. And if it goes too low, he like can only trudge along. Yeah. And they were like, perfect. Then he'll just, that's the motivator to eat food and yeah. he will balance it out. And IG Anuma has told, said this in a few interviews. He said, and it just wasn't any fun. Oh no. It was horrible. You were always losing. Yeah. And so then that's when they said, okay, well, we still want to do the cooking. I get, we will sh- reinterpret it as hearts. Yeah. And that was the right choice to make. I oh, think. Oh yeah. Any, any game that like, and I remember, I think dark cloud, like it was a game, Maybe. Uh, uh, but you had to drink water because oh. like, like you had a full thing and it just, as you did stuff do, 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 and you'd have to like, you could walk into some water and be fine. But like, I just remember it's like, I hated that mechanic mm. that like you're constantly being depleted. I'm like, I'm essentially poisoned. Yeah. Like, I'm right. constantly losing yeah. and I have to constantly replenish, even though like, I mean, haven't been hit. Oh, it always irked me. Yeah. Not a big fan of those. I hear that. So that's a great example of how when you are making a game, finding that balance is important. Yeah. And I do think that for the most part, a lot of this stuff is pretty dang fun and pretty dang cool in Breath of the Wild. Absolutely. These, these different mechanics. Yeah. All right, Dan, I think we're, we are going to uh, clean up this cabin. We're going get, to get get out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No rain. The rain never came. Well, now that we're finishing up, it's going to start downpouring. It's gonna that's usually how it works out. Minutes. Um, uh, people can find you out there. Do you, would you be inclined hmm. to speak about the podcast that you're putting together? That's not going to come out till I think like December. Or yeah. Maybe yeah. We got later. a couple, we're, we got a couple months away. We're still, uh, hammering out nuts and bolts. Um, but me and my buddy, Matt, we are going to start through six, I media. Mm-hmm. Um, we are going to do a podcast called fan fiction. Mm-hmm. Um, me and Matt have been nerds our entire life as most nerds mostly are played a ton of video games. And we always like once you finish a f- playing a video game, love or hate it, there's always the conversation of what would you do different? Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, how would you change it? What little things do you think could be fixed or what did you love and just want to talk more about how much you loved mm-hmm. it? So each week 
we are going to pick a video game franchise uh, and try and rewrite a little bit of the story. We don't want to like completely, you know, make a sequel game. Um, oh, right. But if we did and could, what would we want to do? You what know, would you tweak or this or that? Yeah, what would we tweak? Mm-hmm. Um, it, and I want it to be mostly lore based. Like if we can come up possibly with a brand new ending, a brand new story. We it's don't fun. like how this happened. So each week we'll uh, spend a little time. Oh, so you take what's built and you see if you can like riff on it. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, I love it. That'd be cool. And I, I know you've talked, it's going to be mostly video games the first season. Is that what so, it is? Because um, you did say maybe some yeah, films and stuff. Yeah, we, we kind of want to start out with video games. That's me and Matt's like kind of whenever we get together, that's what we're talking about. Love it. Um, but we also talk a lot about movies. So we're thinking if everything works out well, maybe season two, we'll do some movies. Mm-hmm. If, you know, we had to write a sequel or we didn't like the ending of this one, you know. Yeah. Um, or maybe you pepper, I have no idea. Maybe you pepper a movie one in every fifth episode. Yeah, yeah. Or Who so, knows? Yeah, something yeah. like that. I mean, yeah. we're still we're still hammering out some details, but. Yeah, like you're, in, the, you're in like the development phase right now. Yeah. I'm very excited about it. You we, guys have even done a couple test recordings. Yeah. And I've been privy to a few of them <laughs> and they're, I, I, I approve. I love them. We had one that's about four minutes of me and Matt just doing Owen Wilson impressions. So <laughs> actually, yeah, hold actually, on to your butts, you, guys. You it's sent that get file crazy. to me. You sent that file to me, and you're like, Dave, it's a lot of Owen Wilson impressions. And I kind of was like, I honestly was Dan. Wow. Dan, I didn't tell you this, but wow. I was like, okay, I really like Dan. I think he's a creative person. <laughs> I I know that he's going to make a good show, but four minutes of Owen Wilson. But then. When I listened, it was like contextual. Oh, yeah. It was appropriate. It was hysterical. We, when we were testing out, something about Owen Wilson just sat right with us that day. Yeah, it's probably because you were testing out wow. around the time of Loki. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so uh, fan fiction is going to be it's, – It's. I think truthfully it will probably premiere to the public. You guys are going to start making real episodes in, in a little while. But yeah, I think yeah. it's – there's mean, going to – there's always a – when we develop a new show, there's always like almost three or four months delay from when it actually yeah. comes out. So this is probably going to be like an early spring thing next year i'm thinking when people are gonna start uh we got all the equipment it's just uh like i still want to just because i want to also learn how to edit and everything like Mm -hmm. i want to be able to give you a a finished all you got to do is upload it so i'm still learning some stuff i put the little ads in the middle oh yeah you do uh, you do your thing yeah yeah um but i i still have some stuff i want to learn um we still gotta make sure we got all the nuts and bolts and how the whole thing's gonna be structured out you've got the content that's for sure yeah and that's the most important part and that's cool and the content is four minutes of owen wilson (laughs) every episode that's all it is that's all it is well anyway fan fiction people can keep an eye out for that at that point you'll actually be able to Send people towards a Twitter. Yes, yes. I'll finally jump on this whole social media train eventually. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. Well, people can find me on Twitter at Raptor Paint. I'm also on Instagram at Raptor Paint. Um, they can find the show on uh, Twitter, YouTube. Well, Instagram, it's another Zelda podcast. Uh, YouTube, it's another Zelda podcast. I actually haven't said this in quite a while. It's been a – the last time I did an, a fully recorded episode was with Stephanie, which actually was a while ago. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. As of this recording, we're, we're recording <laughs> season four just a little bit out of order. And uh, people can find the show at Another Zelda Pod on Twitter, Another Zelda Podcast on YouTube, Facebook, Pinterest. Uh, Celeste's got us running up on Pinterest now. Absolutely. She also handles our Discord, which I'm very, very grateful for. Oh, yeah, we have she's a bunch great. Of, we have a bunch of blogs over on our website, anotherzeldapodcast.com, where we have um, you know five or six writers now that actually oh, yeah. put, put stuff out for us. Quality the, stuff. I'm basically, on, like, on the off weeks of an episode, the idea is that maybe something goes out on the website. Yeah. So there it all is, and um, Dan, I'm, I, I feel it feels like I'll be seeing you for this Skyward Sir episode. It feels Maybe. like, oh, wow, that might come out around the time. If you Fan let fiction me might buy be it. Out. <laughs> I don't know. I feel really torn right now. My emotions are all over the place, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> all right, let's, uh, you, well, we'll, we'll get to process that on the six hour drive to your place yes, for me to drop you six off. Six hour. I'm just going to be glaring at you angrily for six straight hours. <laughs> and then, I could have been playing. You're going to take a switch out. I could, I could be playing Skyward Sword right, right, right now. I could be playing right That's now, it. but I can't. Your, your punishment is six hours of Owen, Will imp- or Owen Wilson impressions. Well, the first four minutes of it will be wonderful. Wow. <laughs> That's all it is. Dan, thanks so work. much. This is a fun weekend. Thanks I, for recording. Thanks for bringing me down. Thanks for showing me your land. This has been. Been nothing but a treasure. Oh, we did find a treasure. Oh, okay, okay. Already. All right, everybody. Thank you. We'll see you. Uh, okay, bye.